Good morning. As another winter approaches, many of us wonder, will it be mild and damp or could something more dramatic be on the way? Recent winters have been dominated by grey skies and drizzle, thanks to the Atlantic's influence, but the UK has a history of truly severe winters. Just ask anyone who remembers the legendary Big Freeze of 1962-63. That winter brought snowdrifts taller than houses and a cold that froze rivers and even parts of the Thames. So what will winter 2025-26 bring? There are subtle signs that this year could break the recent mild trend. Meteorologists are watching several global weather patterns, drivers that could steer us toward a much colder season. In this outlook, we'll explore the legendary winters of the past and break down the five key global drivers shaping the months ahead. Grab a cup of tea. Let's dive in. To understand a truly severe winter, look back to 1962-63. to It began just after Christmas with a blizzard that buried southern England in deep snow. For 10 weeks, temperatures stayed brutally low. January's average was minus 2.1 degrees Celsius compared to the usual four. Snowdrifts reached over 20 feet, isolating villages and freezing harbors and even parts of the Thames. Milk froze in bottles, schools closed for weeks, and food had to be airlifted to remote communities. The country ran on a war footing, with people showing remarkable resilience. What caused it? A huge high-pressure block over Scandinavia stopped mild Atlantic air, letting Siberian cold pour in. This pattern, blocking high pressure and easterly winds, is what forecasters look for when predicting severe winters. The Big Freeze remains the benchmark for extreme UK winters. It's a reminder that, while rare, the UK can still experience winters that bring the country to a standstill. Understanding these patterns helps us spot the signs of a potential repeat. So, what are the signals this year? Could we see another winter like 1963? To answer that, we need to look at five major global drivers. These drivers, La Nina, the polar vortex, Greenland blocking, Arctic sea ice, and seasonal forecast models set the stage for our winter. When several align, the risk of a severe cold spell rises dramatically. This year, several are showing signs that favor a colder pattern for the UK. A developing La Nina, a potentially wobbly polar vortex, and trends toward more frequent blocking are all on our radar. It's this combination that has forecasters paying close attention. In the next sections, we'll break down each driver and what it could mean for the months ahead. Let's start in the tropical Pacific. La Nina is a climate cycle in the Pacific Ocean, marked by cooler than average waters that can shift weather patterns worldwide. For the UK, La Nina often makes the jet stream wavier, increasing the risk of both wet and cold extremes. Typically, La Nina winters start mild and wet, but as the season progresses, blocking high pressure can build, pushing the jet stream south. This opens the door for cold air from the north or east, especially in January and February. This year, a moderate La Nina is well established and expected to persist through winter. While no single driver guarantees a cold winter, La Nina loads the dice for a colder second half. It primes the atmosphere for other cold signals to take hold. With La Nina in place, the stage is set for a potential shift to colder conditions. Next, let's head north to the polar vortex. How will it behave this year? The polar vortex is a giant spinning mass of cold air high above the North Pole. When strong, it keeps Arctic air locked away, giving the UK mild, wet winters. But if it weakens or wobbles, often triggered by a sudden stratospheric warming, Arctic air can spill south, bringing severe cold. The beast from the east in 2018 was a classic example, following a major SSW event. This winter, 
Models suggest the vortex may be weaker and more susceptible to disruption, especially with La Nina in play. While we can't predict an SSW this far out, the background conditions are more favorable for one, particularly in January or February. A wobbly vortex is another tick in the cold box for the second half of winter. Now, let's look at the Greenland block. The Greenland block is a stubborn high-pressure system near Greenland or Iceland that can shut down the usual flow of mild Atlantic air. When this block forms, the jet stream is diverted south, leaving the UK exposed to cold air from the Arctic or Siberia. The big freeze of 1962-63 and the 2018 Beast from the East both featured powerful blocking patterns. These blocks are the kingmakers of a cold winter. Without them, even a split polar vortex might not bring cold to the UK. This year, both La Nina and a weakened polar vortex increase the odds of a Greenland block forming. Forecast models are already hinting at a greater tendency for high pressure in this region. If the block sets up in the right place, it could direct frigid air straight to our shores. The domino effect from the Pacific and Arctic could make this a real threat. The next piece of the puzzle, Arctic sea ice. How does it fit in? Arctic sea ice is a crucial climate component and its extent at summer's end can influence winter weather far away. Less ice means more heat escapes from the ocean, helping to build high-pressure blocks over Siberia and Scandinavia. These blocks can reinforce cold patterns, preventing mild Atlantic air from reaching the UK. This year, Arctic sea ice was well below average, especially north of Eurasia. That extra open water could help fuel the development of stubborn high-pressure systems. Combined with La Nina and a weak polar vortex, it's another nudge toward a colder winter. The signals are stacking up. Let's see what these drivers could mean in practice. If all these drivers align, we could see a colder than average winter with significant snow and ice. Early winter may be mild and wet, but the real drama could arrive in January or February. A weakened polar vortex and a blocking high near Greenland or Scandinavia could shut down the Atlantic flow. Biting easterly or northerly winds would bring Arctic air, plunging temperatures below freezing for days or weeks. Snow events could be frequent and disruptive, especially in eastern UK. This is the classic Beast from the East setup. Picturesque, but challenging for travel and infrastructure. Watch for sudden stratospheric warming and rising pressure to the north and east as key signals. If forecasters start talking about these in January, it's time to prepare for a real winter. This outcome would be a stark contrast to recent years. But there's another possibility. The other scenario? Another mild, wet and windy winter, like many in recent memory. If the global drivers fail to align, the Atlantic could dominate, keeping the polar vortex strong and blocking fleeting. Persistent cloud, rain, and above average temperatures would be the norm, with snow limited to Scottish mountains. Flooding, not frost, would be the main concern. The real pattern will become clearer by late December or early January, as we see how the polar vortex and blocking patterns develop. For now, the stage is set for a dramatic winter, but the final act is unwritten. What are you hoping for? A winter wonderland or a mild escape? Either way, we'll keep you updated.